how to do a very basic safety application. Um, in my application, I'm going to be setting up a couple of just dual channel stop inputs and simulating a safe torque off to a PowerFlex 525 VFD or PowerFlex 755. Um, also, just showing the configurable redundant output as well, going to just a couple of safety contactors. So, more or less, um, what you do, I've got a 1769 L36 ERMS, so the S is for safety, and then my safety I.O. that I'm using, I'm using point I.O., 1734 AENTR with 1734 IB8 S's and a 1734 OB8 S for my safety. With the program, I set it up and you always have a separate task for your safety. So in my case, I've just got this safety task. I'm just using one main routine. I could have multiple subroutines just like you can in your standard programming I will basically show how I'm using a dual channel stop. Basically, I set it up. I give each DCS a name, just called it Zone 1 DCS 1. I am using two channels because I'm simulating an emergency stop. The E stops have two contacts, one going to point zero, the other one going to point one. I have it set up in this instance with a discrepancy time of 250 milliseconds. I could set that any different ranges. What the discrepancy time does is tells you I'm going to expect to see both contacts opening or closing within that amount of time. If they don't, then it's going to cause a fault because maybe a, a wire fell off or there's something defective with the switch. The restart type, I've just got it set to automatic. You can set it to manual if you would like. If you set it to manual, then every time you hit the e-stop and you pull the e-stop back out, you're going to have to hit a, a manual start again or a reset. Here's another DCS instruction. The safety function It'll give you just a pull down on this, so I can just show you what the pull down would look like. I could call it whatever I want, but this is strictly for documentation purposes. I could call it an e stop, a light curtain, a safety gate, safety mat, whatever. Um, I just picked cable rope pull. And then the input status will just go ahead and set this up. I can set this up a number of ways as well. I could have it check the whole module status. Um, sometimes you'll see it where it'll say, you know, zone one underscore DCS two dot um, combined input status. In which case, if any of the inputs on that module are bad, it would fault the DCS instruction. And in this case, I'm just going to look at the status of my point two and point three. And as long as those two inputs are OK, I'm going to say my DCS two is OK to run. So and that it's that it's functioning, functioning just fine. I've got a couple additional DCS instructions. I'm only using three of them here. And then the logic that you use is basic ladder logic. If I do have a DCS instruction that's going to, let's say, I either have a, a DCS fault or I'm just going to be doing a reset, um, I would set this up to say, OK, once I've faulted my DCS instruction, I need to reset that instruction. And in this case, I'm just calling this my safe torque off enable. And once the safe torque off enable, 
says I'm okay to go, I'm going to turn on the outputs on my safety card to go to the safe torque off terminals on my VFD. In this case, I'm doing a stop category one because when I hit that e-stop condition, I want to be able to stop that VFD in a controlled fashion. So in this case, I just set it to a, a, a five second delay and after five seconds, then I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna tell the drive to stop within those five seconds. And then I'm gonna also, after that, take power off the safe torque off so there's no power on the drives. The other instruction that I'm using is a con configurable redundant output this is going to be going to my safety contacts. In, in my case here, um, I'm just using a simulated feedback. Normally, I would just have the feedbacks from my safety contactors. They maybe are, would be in series, and I would have them go to a, another safety input. Um, and once... The C route instruction says everything's functioning properly. I'm going to go ahead and turn the outputs on to enable that safety contactor, which is going to provide power to your zone one part of your machine. And mostly that's everything on the logic here. And I'll just kind of quickly go through. Um, I have a physical e-stop hooked up here, so let me hit the e-stop. And you see the e-stop, those both went low. So I'm in an e-stop condition. I haven't faulted. All I've done is I've hit the e-stop. Now I pull the e-stop. Notice my DCS instruction now, again, Output one goes high because he's functioning just fine. However, after an e-stop, I need to turn on my reset again. I have to reset the circuit, um, restart the outputs, because anytime you hit a DCS, you don't want to just pull the DCS and ha have the machine just start running automatically again. So I'll hit the restart, my fault reset, or the restart, and you see it started my safe torque off on my VFDs, and it also turned on my safety contactors. So anyway, that's how that works. Hopefully that makes sense to everybody. Have a great day.